A few dollars difference adds up fast, and it's a recipe for reliability issues. These little refrigeration controllers are everywhere. This one's made by Dixel, but there's many brands out there. They share a similar form factor, with differences in overall length, as well as number and type of connections and control capability. This one uses spade terminals for the line voltage, and screw clamp terminals for the thermistors and low voltage. It's rated for 120 volt single phase supply, though 208, 230, and even dual voltage versions are available. This model only features one relay, and therefore is only able to control a medium temp refrigeration system with air defrost, in this case a condiment serving table at a gas station. The problem was, it would randomly stick in the on cycle. Customers seeking condiments for their gas station hot dogs were disappointed to find the relish tray was an iceberg and the ketchup wouldn't pump. I want to replicate the problem on camera, so I'll go ahead and wire this up. The issue was intermittent, so at times it would fail and only recover with a prolonged shutdown, and other times it would operate normally, sometimes for days. There's four modes of failure these units typically encounter. Water damage to the unit, thermistor failure, power connection or other wiring fault, and relay failure. I'm already suspecting the relay, because no matter the brand, these units are limited in what relays can be used by the form factor. Throw in a hefty dose to cost cutting, and it's a recipe for reliability issues. I'm using a bathroom fan heater, which I included pictures of in the bath fan refurbishing video. This one was part of a fan used for spare parts, and unfortunately will not fit to replace the rattle trap heater at the house here. I'd love to have an inductive motor load to simulate a compressor, but the heater should present a similar running current load. Using the configuration menus, I set it to cycle on for one minute, then off for one minute in case of sensor failure, then simulate sensor failure by detaching the thermistors. Unfortunately, the problem would not show itself in a reasonable time frame, and I don't have countless hours to observe until it finally does act up. I'm guessing a combo of inductive load and heat soak would finally cause the right conditions for the contacts to weld after hours or days. Time to take it apart. The chassis is flimsy plastic that clips together. I'm not exactly being nice, and it's not exactly cooperative, so damage is inevitable. There's not a lot going on in here. One relay, an itty bitty transformer, and looks like the microcontroller is on the same vertical board that holds the display and buttons. Let's compare the specs of the relay to the conditions it faced. It wasn't running a very big cooler, with a compressor rated load amps of about 7, and inrush current in the 40 amp range. The relay claims to be a general purpose, heavy duty power relay in normally open, single pole layout, with suitability for HVAC applications. Mechanical lifespan is easy to reach absurd numbers with modern materials. Contact electrical lifespan is a limiting factor. Here it claims 100,000 cycles at what I assume is 20 amps resistive load, 250 volts AC. The lifespan chart is a little bit more optimistic, with 150,000 operations at those conditions. Again, this is talking about a resistive load such as a heating element, which is very easy to drive. It has no massive inrush current such as a power supply with reservoir capacitors, and no inductive voltage spike on brake such as from a motor. Those conditions cause accelerated wear and require substantial derating of a switch. Here's a look at a relay from a project, from the dark times when I wasn't making videos. This one also says general purpose, but specifies motor switching applications in the datasheet. Looking at the load ratings here, taking into account the brutal inrush and inductive spike from a motor load, this one's rated for 200,000 cycles. Even switching an inverter which really hammers it with inrush, it manages 30,000 cycles. Interesting enough, the resistive load chart is a bit more conservative, but I might trust this one a little bit more given the other listed conditions. Comparing the prices, it's easy to see why certain choices were made. A few dollars difference adds up fast when millions of units are being produced. If a fair number of them give up after only a handful of years, that's even more revenue in the form of replacement controllers. Now for the big reveal. Just gotta carefully open up the relay with a Dremel and a screwdriver. What have we here? Lo and behold, toasted contacts. This thing is trashed and pitted and honestly surprising it wasn't welding when I tested it earlier. There's a thick layer of deposited contact material from the arcing. If that cooler cycled an average of 4 times per hour, which is on the low side for small coolers, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, times 5 years, there's over 175,000 cycles. Taking into account the derating and how it was not tested for motor load conditions, even though this is a 115 volt motor at only single digit amps, it's no wonder the relay has failed. In fact, it may have greatly exceeded its rated service life for those conditions. 
the Omron relay would still be purring along, waiting for some other major component to give up first. Hope you enjoyed this little dive into the frustration of dealing with small commercial refrigeration controllers. These things are everywhere, and it's a shame cheap parts let them down, as they otherwise need far less maintenance than mechanical temp controls and defrost timers. Where allowed, I like to see these driving a contactor instead, which gives greatly extended life, and is far cheaper to replace considering these controllers can approach 200 bucks each, wholesale cost. Thanks for watching, until next time.